Teenage girls have a better experience of life versus anyone else in the entire world. Now, before you call me crazy, Hi, I'm Kamal, and this is my podcast, Before You Call Me Crazy. And today we are diving in to things only a teenage girl will understand, in my opinion. And disclaimer, this is based off of like the hell is a teenage girl trend on TikTok. Obviously, not only teenage girls identify with all of this. You could literally be anyone. I just want to make sure that everyone feels included in this. If you saw on TikTok, there is a trend going around that's like, hell is a teenage girl hell is a teenage girl and then like these girls are posting like these very niche examples of things they went through growing up as a teenage girl and i was like this is such a good podcast episode because i have always thought in my head that teenage girls have like a very specific outlook and experience on certain things growing up okay first off i want to ask you what did you do in your room when you were 13 and 14 years old. I bet you, you literally don't know. But I swear, those are like two of the most like life-changing years, like life-altering years in your mind, like that you had during your like growing up era. Like I saw all these TikToks that were like, what did you do when you were 13 and 14 as a teenage girl in your room? And I, you guys, I cannot tell you one thing I did. I have no idea what I did. Why were those years so monumental to me? I don't know. I remember I was in my room all the time. I did not leave my room. Was I on my phone? What was I doing? Was I on my phone? And I asked my friends this too. Because I was like, is this an only me experience? No, no one remembers. Because at that age, you're not with your friends every day. You don't really have a boyfriend. And you kind of hate your parents at that age. So what are you doing? That's one thing. And like, I feel like... All the guys I've talked to, I kind of talked to some of my girlfriends and some of my guy friends to kind of see the different opinions on everything I'm going to say on this list. And my guy friends were like, oh, I was playing hockey. I'm like, okay, I was not. Like, what was I doing? Literally, what was I doing? Like, I was not playing a sport either. Also, something to add. I was not playing a sport. And I even asked my boyfriend and he was like, oh, I was just hanging out with my friends all day. Okay, what? I did not. Anyways, that's one experience that I think, whatever. Then I saw this tweet that was like when a guy does shrooms he realizes what every teenage girl internally realized when they were like alone in their bedroom during their teenage years and i was like that's so true like every time i talk to a guy after he's done shrooms he's like i realized i am self-aware now and now i like get everything in my head and i'm like yeah we girls have been on that we're all self-aware we know what we're doing we understand our emotions. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I just saw that. Again, I don't want anyone out here calling me misogynistic because this is very much based off of a trend and based off of a tweet. So I don't want to hear any of that. Does anyone remember being a teenager and screaming at your parents and then having no remorse? Hell is a teenage girl. Like, why do I remember? Like, I would like get so angry at my parents and like scream at them for, because I swear to God, like there was nothing going on that was deep enough for me to be screaming the way I was when I was like 13 years old. I'd be like, I hate my lies. Get me out of here. Oh my God. And I'm pretty sure like, like, I don't know, but I swear to God, like that, like, again, I asked a few of my guy friends. I was like, did you ever scream at your parents like that? They're like, no, like, well, what? I just didn't talk to them. And guys literally will be like, no, I just didn't talk to my parents. And then me and my girlfriends were like, no, yeah, I used to scream at my like parents, like gets like screaming arguments with my mom. And I was like, yeah, me too. Like literally me too. And then, yeah, and I would literally have like a no remorse until like five days later. No, yo, that was kind of shitty of me. That is another, I think, only teenage girl experience that a lot of us have had, if you're a teenage girl. Another thing is the pressure of a first day of school outfit. I cannot be the only one that was up all night thinking, what should I wear to school on the first day? You know what I mean? Like the first day jitters, like what type of bow am I gonna have in my hair? What type of jeans should I wear? Like what was the outfit on the first day of school such a big deal for me and my girlfriends? And then I asked my guy friends, again, did you ever care what you wore on the first day of school? No. What? Actually, a few of my guy friends were like, yes, like, I loved going first day of school shopping. But also, most of my guy friends were like, no, I did not care. Like, I don't understand, like, why we as girls just cared so much about our first day of school outfit. It was like I was going to the Met Gala, honestly. Like, I was like, mom, I need a new outfit. I need a new pair of jeans. She's like, no, you don't. I'm like, yes, I do, mom. And then my mom would, like, get in on it also. And we'd, like, go to the mall and spend, like, way too much money on, like, a first 
first day of school outfit that I would probably never wear again. And lots of my friends had the exact same experience. So anyways, another thing is, okay, this is just something I've realized very recently is the sanctity of Dior. Teenage girls in general, like look at Dior, like it's like a beautiful, pretty princess of a brand. Do you know what I mean? Gucci, Louis and all those other brands are like, see, it's just like, okay, designer brands. But I've noticed with Dior, Dior is like a marketing icon because Dior has marketed itself to be like a pretty, perfect, like a cherry on top of bow, pink cupcake. Like, like, I don't know why. Like, I just know it's like so many teenage girls see Dior as like this, like, like beautiful, like sacred brand. Like, oh my God, I have a Dior perfume. Like, do you know what I mean? So anyways, that is also something that's kind of random that I've noticed. Now, the next thing, if none of these have been relatable, this one has to be the one. I'm telling you, close your eyes and imagine this. You just cleaned your room and you cleaned your nightstand. Okay, now that's rare. Nightstand's always messy, right? And you light a candle and put it on the nightstand. That is like a woman reborn. I am not even getting like, there is something so special about cleaning your room and then lighting a candle on top of cleaning your room. Then it's glowing beautifully on your nightstand. Hello, that is like such a beautiful experience. Like you just know the feeling, like it is like a mindset reset. It is like a lifestyle reset. Like when I'm cleaning my room to the point where I'm gonna light a candle, like you can't call me crazy then. I'm literally sane. Like that's a time when I'm sane. Okay, I actually have been wanting to talk about this. The way people love pink versus the way people love any other color, like red or blue, okay? I feel like when someone likes the color pink, it is an aggressive light. It is like when someone likes the color pink, like their phone case will be pink, okay? They will have pink bed sheets. They will have a pink candle. They will have like a pink themed makeup, okay? Whatever, whatever. But when someone likes the color blue, I've never, I've never met anyone that's like, oh, I like the color blue. And they have like 10 different things around their room that are blue. Or I've never met someone that likes the color red and their entire room is red. But I have met girls that like the color pink and everything is pink. I've never seen people like a color like how people like pink. Like it is, the, the color pink has such a big stan club around it that like if the color pink was a band, they would win. They would win whatever band competition that there is in the world. For example, me, I love the color pink so much. Everything, if I can buy anything in pink, I will. Oh, I will. You bet I will. My boyfriend's favorite color is red. I didn't even know that. Do you know why? Because nothing in his room is red. I'm like, what? But you like the color red. He's like, yeah, that doesn't mean I'm going to buy red things. And that doesn't make sense to me. I've noticed that a lot of teenage girls, like me and all my friends, we be looking at the world like it is a perfect fairy tale ad. We look at the world out of like rose colored glasses. Like there are unicorns flying through the sky. And I have always been like this. And I know me and my friends are always like everything positive was going to happen to us. Like we are awesome. Like the world is our oyster. Like we love it here. Like, like literally. And then like, for example, like my guy friends, they're just like a lot more like realistic. I would say like they're just like, yeah, whatever. Like this is the world. <laughs> like, okay. And while I'm over here, like, there's a rainbow in the sky every single day in my mind. Do you know what I mean? Like, I just feel like a lot of girls... Also, I stole this point from one of those hell is a teenage girl trend. I'm gonna be honest. Genuinely, I have realized so many teenage girls literally just look at the world through rose-colored glasses, and I love it. It's like this, like, like beautiful pink tint on our eyes that just, like, make everything happy and perfect and pretty. And it just can't be me. It can't just be me that thinks like this, okay? The way you feel more beautiful gradually as you're doing your makeup. Now, not, okay, now this applies to like everyone because obviously not only girls do their makeup, but guys, we have to be honest with this. Like the way, the beautifulness, like the way, the, the empowering, the inspiration that fills floods my body as I'm doing my makeup, the way I'm like starting to feel like a princess as I'm like beating my concealer in, like that is so, if, okay, I honestly recommend, and I know no one will do this, but if you've never put makeup on your face, put makeup on your face, you will feel beautiful. Like you will just like, it's just like a revamp. It's like a real life face tune. <laughs> like, okay, not actually guys, not actually. That's, that's a joke. Don't face tune, you're perfect. Genuinely, like, the feeling you get as you're doing your makeup, like me and my friends will always talk about, and I always see this on Twitter, like getting ready for the party is better than going to the party. Like the feeling of like getting ready and like looking hot and like like putting on your makeup and like seeing that difference. And like, obviously I love myself without makeup. There's just something so fun about like putting art on your face. Like it's literally art at the end of the day. Like you're painting your face. Like there's something so special about doing this art on your face and then just like looking at it and feeling how beautiful you look and the feeling of mascara running. You can cry and your mascara won't run. When you cry and your mascara does run, you can feel it. You know what I mean? Like you can feel 
that makeup like pouring down your skin if you don't get it you don't get it like it's just like being alone in your room and you're 14 and you just yelled at your mom for no reason and you feel no remorse yet you're crying and the mascara is running down that that's crazy it's now that that is crazy that's like so teenage girl like i cannot even express that enough like that whole scenario I just built out for you in your brain. Like, oh my God, like I'm getting nostalgia of like me in middle school in my room. Like literally, <laughs> like why am I in my room right now? Mentally, I'm in my room screaming at my mom, crying about Lord knows what, feeling like I'm on shrooms if I was a guy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Say no to drugs. <laughs> I hope anyone related to this, it's going to be really embarrassing for me if literally no one relates. So please tell me, like, please DM me on Instagram and be like, I kind of relate because if not, I'm just going to live with embarrassment for the rest of my life. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Before You Call Me Crazy. Follow me on Instagram so you can keep updated with when the next episode is going to be up. And yeah, if you watch this, you are iconic, hot, cool, slay, and perfect. Bye!